Here we are, Third Baptist friends, family, back in the house of the Lord, back with a new day, with a brand new attitude, with a brand new outlook, with a brand new praise, with a brand new focus, a brand new heart, and a brand new spirit. Here to tell the Lord, thank you for everything that the Lord has done, for everything that the Lord is doing, for everything that the Lord is getting ready to do. And I don't know about you, but I came to tell our God, thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for every provision. Thank you for providing. Thank you for every good thing that you have done. And I know that you're not done doing what you are able to do. And I'm glad for 2020, as we've come to almost the end of the year, I came to tell the name of the Lord, thank you. It's been some hard days. It's been some dark days and some dark nights, but I came to tell the name of the Lord, thank you anyway. And I know that you're not done. For the word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and it has not even been revealed in the heart of men and women what you have in store for them who love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. So I dare you, Third Baptist, to just lift up your praise and lift up your hands Open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you anyway. It's been hard in 2020. We've cried some tears. We've lost some loved ones. We've lost some friends. We've had some dark times and some dark days. But the Lord is still with us. The Lord is with us. And the Lord can take us wherever the Lord desires for us to go. And I don't know about you, but I came war ready today. I came war ready with my praise jacket on, with my spirit high and my mind focused and my eyes set on the Lord. I came with a, a brand new praise, hey, and a brand new focus and a brand new heart and a brand new spirit telling my enemy, you can't hold me, you can't stop me, you can't prevent me, but my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in me. So I came ready today, putting on the whole armor of God. I came ready, war ready, hey, to tell my God I'm ready. Wherever you lead me, I'll follow. Wherever you take me, I'm ready, Lord. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and pressing my way forward to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. For God, you are with me, and you are my war shield, my strength, and my redeemer. Lord, we gonna be all right. Hey, I dare you to just turn to your neighbor if you got a neighbor, and tell him we gonna be all right. And if you got nobody there, just look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the eye and say, I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right. I've come through the fire, hey. I've come through the storm. I've come through the rain. I've come through the flood. I've come through sickness. Hey, I've come through pain. I've come through tribulation. And the Lord is with me, keeping me. My rod and thy staff, he, he comforts me. The Lord is with me, and I'm war ready now. I've come through everything, and I can't stop now. And I'm going to be all right. Though sickness, I'm going to be all right. Though pain, I'm going to be all right. Though misfortune, I'm going to be all right. Because the Lord is with me and the Lord is carrying me forward. I came war ready today and I came to tell the enemy, nothing can stop me. Nothing can prevent me. Nothing can provoke me because my God is able to do all things but fail. For he is the keeper of my head and the blesser of my soul unto him be glory and majesty for our Lord is able to do everything except fail. Hey, I dare you to just praise the Lord. I dare you to forget about 2020 and focus your eyes on 21 for the Lord is taking us to a new place and the Lord is doing a new thing and we will be all right. Good morning, 
morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Jasper Mitchell and I'm in the youth ministry. You can follow me at Twin Sounds on Facebook and Instagram. Today I'm here to share with you the TVCOC announcements for Sunday, November 29th, 2020. Every Monday through Friday, we have the Manna from Heaven prayer call at 8 a.m. to refresh us as we start our day. To call in, dial 712-770-4010, access code 618-471-PAVASON. If you or a loved one are sending in the need of prayer, please join us. You can also send prayer requests to prayer at thirdbaptistchicago.org to be added to the prayer list. On Tuesdays, the church receives a weekly message from Pastor entitled Staying Connected with Pastor Hughes. Be on the lookout for that. It comes out via flock. Last Tuesday's message from Pastor shared that December will be the month of giving. Letters will be sent via email and to your homes this week with more details on how you can support the ministry by giving. Be on the lookout for that. Every Wednesday, the youth ministry has a quarantine check-in at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Every Wednesday evening, you can experience Wednesdays at the Well, your midweek biblical reflection time every week at 7 p.m. on the church website, Facebook, and YouTube channel. On Thursday, a COVID-19 update is sent to the church via flock note and posts on our website. It's filled with great information, information so check it out. Every Thursday, we have a church-wide prayer call at 7 p.m. To join, dial 712-770-4010. Access code 618-471-POUNDS. Every Saturday, the TBCOC Food Pantry is open from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you're in need, please come down and let us be a blessing to you. Sunday school is in session every Sunday. If you'd like to join, you can dial 712-770-5505, code 476-699-POUNDS. You can also join the video conference at joinfreeconferencecall.com slash tbcoc SS6. Registration is still going on for the Women's Ministry Monthly Monday Monologue Series entitled She, Speak, Help, and Engage. The next one will be held Monday, December 21st, entitled Sister, Your Slip is Hanging, slash the spirit and adapting to change in churches in 2020. Our very own Tony C. Gerald, Reverend Naomi Mitchell, and Claudel Hampton will be presenting. If you haven't already, please do so today. The schedule and registration forms are available through Flocknote and on the church website. If you have any questions, contact Tony C. Gerald, Bridget Jones Robinson, or Reverend Naomi Mitchell. I'm Jasper Mitchell, and that concludes this week's announcements. Thank you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. One of the great things and great privileges that we get to enjoy as the church is rendering an offering unto the Lord. Let me first take this opportunity to say thank you to every member of Third Baptist Church of Chicago who has remained faithful during this difficult season and difficult time with your tithes and your offering. And I pray that if you're watching me and you're not a member of Third Baptist Church of Chicago and you want to walk beside us and sow a seed into this ministry that we might continue to meet the needs of God's people. I would thank you and appreciate you in advance. Thank you to all of you. And let's stay committed and stay faithful to our efforts as we get through the last part of this most difficult year. God is with us and the Lord will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. It's the kind of God that we serve. God only asks that we bring all of the tithes and the offerings into his house, that there might be meat in his house. And he says, prove me, try me and see. Won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive? Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the days ahead then God as we look back now in the rearview mirror as we come to the close almost of 2020 what a difficult and trying time it has been 
But God, you are faithful. And God, you keep on keeping us. And we thank you. Now, God, we have come back faithful and obedient to your word to sow seeds of tithe and of offering. God, we pray now that as we release these things unto you, that God, by your spirit and according to your word, that you would press them down, shake them together, and run them over, that they may meet the needs for which we have received them. God, I thank you for every tithe and for every offering. Then, God, I thank you for every person connected to the tithe and the offering. And, God, if there be any among us who have a desire to give but nothing to render, God, I pray by your spirit that you would bless them even the more. God, let your spirit meet them at their places and points of need. God, we know that little becomes much when it's placed in the master's hands. So God, we in advance give your name the glory and we give your name the honor and the praise. Do it in Jesus' name. God, do it for us as we do it unto thee. God, bless in a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you in advance. All together, the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Don't forget, we have multiple ways to bless the church. You can do it now on our website. You can do it through text to give. And now we have even created a cash app. You can cash app us at dollar sign TBCOC Chicago and bless us. And we'll be sure to tell the name of the Lord. Thank you for every good and for every perfect gift that comes from above. Bless you and thank you. And may the Lord keep and bless you until we're together again. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And amen.
Peace be unto the saints. Good morning, Third Baptist. Let us settle our hearts, minds, and spirit as this altar call prayer. In spite of all of what's going on in this world, during these crazy, unprecedented times, God is still on the throne. I'm so glad that he still sits high, yet looks low. And his concern is for us and about us. As we go to the throne of grace with every circumstance, every situation, led at the mercy seat of Jesus Christ, he say, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. Shall we pray? God in heaven, the giver, sustainer, creator of everything. God, before we ask you for anything, we would be remiss not to thank you for everything. God, we have longed for sweet rest. We've longed for an end to this corona situation. God, but in spite of what it looks like, we want to tell you thank you. God, in spite of the craziness, the death toll is rising. God, but you dispatch your angels encamped about us that no hurt, harm, or danger has come near us, oh God. We thank you for our last night's slumber as we slept. No fires broke out, no thieves broke in. God, we want to tell you thank you. God, I know it sounds repetitive, God, but I'm thankful for it on today. How you look beyond our faults, oh God, and you meet our needs. That you didn't just create us and forget about us. But you continue to see about us. You continue to make ways out of no ways, God. And we thank you. God, we're in time where the leadership don't want to transition. We're praying for that on today. God, we're praying for a peaceful transfer of power on today. We ask, oh God, that you would move by your spirit, move by your power, even now, oh God. Continue to meet the needs of your people. God, I don't have to call out the need. You know all about it because you're all knowing. We thank you, O oh God. You select leaders. You put people in high places, God. God, you said in your word for us to pray for those that have rule and authority over us. So even now we're praying for now President Donald Trump. We're praying that he would let a smooth, peaceful transition of power take place, oh God. And then we're praying for the Biden and Harris administration, oh God. That you would wipe the slate clean, oh God, of wherever their past mishaps might be, oh God. And you would just wipe away and give them a new start, oh God, a fresh start to see about these yet to be United States of America. God, we're asking for healing. We're asking for a vaccine of this corona pandemic situation. Oh God, that's just close to it, but God, I know you can touch with your mighty hand and move like you never have before. Do 
it for us, oh God. We ask right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would continue to meet the needs of this local branch of Zion, Third Baptist Church of Chicago. Continue to anoint our pastor with knowledge and Holy Ghost power from on high. Continue to bless every auxiliary, every ministry, every deacon, minister, every arm of the Third Baptist Church of Chicago. That we can be that beacon light on this corner of 95th and Ashton. God, I know we're, everything is virtual now, but God, let a message be preached. Let a word be spoken, a song sang that would touch somebody and lead them unto you. We glorify your name, God. We know that you're going to do it because you that's what you do. Continue to do what you do, oh God. We promise if you do it, oh God, we'll be careful, never absent-minded to give your name all of the glory, to give your name all of the praise. God, when I ask for prayers for Governor Pritzker, the leadership of this state, Mayor Lori Lightfoot and the leadership of this city. It's rough times right now. I believe they're trying to lead the best way they know how. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they would just lay every circumstance, lay every problem, every situation at the mercy seat of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe, God, that if they would ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you would look and have mercy. Have mercy like you never have before. God, we... We lift up our head, we look up, lift up our heart, we lift up our eyes unto you. Heals from which come at our help. God, because we know all our help comes from you. We thank you, O oh God. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. God, we know you're going to do it. Do it for your honor. Do it for your glory. We promise we won't take any of the credit. God, we thank you. We praise you. It's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. And the people of God said amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Join us this day in the word of our Lord in the book of Philippians, written from the Apostle Paul Philippians, Philippians chapter four, and I'll begin reading at verse four, and I'll conclude. I'll conclude at verse 9. Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4, and I'll conclude through verse 9. Thank you to each of you who were with me and joined with me remotely last week as we celebrated the fourth pastoral anniversary of my brother and friend, Pastor Jeffrey Smith and Bethlehem Temple Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, Third Baptist, for being with your pastor. Last week, as I was in the Old Testament, and today I'm going to venture into the treasury that we know as the New Testament. Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4. I'll be reading today from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, and it reads Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. That the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, 
by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there, are, if there is any excellence, the other version of this says, if there be any praise, and if there be anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. The God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and especially the doers of his holy word. Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Tell somebody we wrestle not against flesh and blood. My fight is not against you and your fight are not against me, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Therefore, take on to you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day against the wiles of the devil. Every one of us know the devil is coming. And he's coming with every trick in the book. But I'm so glad that I read Isaiah 54 and 17, where it says no weapon, no past weapon, no current weapon, no future weapon, no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. But God is on our side because he has given us the victory. I'm so glad he gave us the victory today. Tell your neighbor, I have the victory because on a hill called Calvary, over 2,000 years ago, our Savior, Jesus Christ, went on the glory for our sins, for my sins, for your sins. Tell somebody we have the victory. Jesus has given us the victory. On a hill called Golgotha, on a hill called Golgotha. salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble and they fail. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. is defeated. He is defeated. He is defeated. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. We have the victory. He is defeated. The devil is defeated. Hallelujah, somebody. God has given us the victory. text read from Philippians chapter 4. Pray with me this day. Our God and our Father, we thank you for the spirit that is yours. And God, we humble ourselves today under the hand that God provides every provision for our good. God, if it had not been for you who was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us whole. We thank you today. And then, God, we thank you that uh, though, God, you sent your son and he is now back present with thee, God, you left us the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us and keep us. And then, God, above that, you have left us your word as the blueprint for our lives. God, I pray that you would give me the preaching power that, that rightfully divides the word of truth. God, speak to the hearts of your people. And let your word be the antidote to their every need. God, I pray that there be, if there be any sin in me, that God, you would diminish it and remove it so that it might not hinder your word from reaching your people. God, do a new and a mighty thing. And then, God, when it is over, you have our both undivided attention and permission to do with us what you desire. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we do pray that every heart say amen. Amen. I would like to tag this text this morning from the pen of Paul oozing out of the spirit of who Paul is. A life of thanksgiving. A life of thanksgiving. You ought to just touch yourself and say, I want to live a life of thanksgiving. Every year at this very time all across this country, children in schools everywhere are being asked, what are you thankful for? And many of them give thanksgiving in recognition to what they have or who they have. But it is apparent that we are indoctrinating them to associate thanks and thanksgiving with things. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
We ought to always be thankful for what we have. But if Paul was in the room and if he were asked what he was thankful for, I am certain that it wouldn't simply be because of the things he has. For Paul, thanksgiving took on a different meaning. For Paul, thanksgiving wasn't merely relegated even to his own current reality. His thanksgiving was centered in another place. His thanksgiving rested well in the realm that could not be affected by any momentary ordeal. It could not be blocked by some battle. It could not be cut off by some temporal tragedy because Paul sought to be thankful in all things. In fact, the very context in which this letter is written validates this reality. The upbeat tone and the ever apparent aptitude of its language reveals that Paul's circumstantial condition has absolutely nothing to do with the centerpiece of his thankfulness. Because Paul is writing the letter from the confines of a Roman prison. But, but this is also provided the tension in the text. Because Paul's language doesn't match his predicament. Uh, his declaration doesn't match his dilemma. Not only is he in prison, but the end of his life could potentially be near. But not only that, the prospect of such isn't even enough to extinguish Paul's enthusiasm. In fact, he talks about it later, earlier in the text, when he says, I've learned to be content in all things. Because Paul declared not only uh, because Paul declared not only that because he understood that I have Christ in all things. Paul understood that what many of us still haven't yet to learn, that Christ and having Christ in every situation is enough for him. He, he warned them of false teachers who wanted to add on to Christ Jesus. Because the problem is, when you add on to Jesus, you're actually subtracting from him at the same time. Because you're suggesting that Christ is insufficient and you need something more. That's what Paul is trying to get us to understand in the text. And when you have a Jesus, he's trying to get us to understand that when you have Jesus... Uh, when you have the Lord and you can have joy in all things and you can have a joy and you can be thankful in him in the midst of all things because the Lord is a worthy recipient of thanksgiving. And since the Lord is worthy, is a worthy recipient of my thankfulness, then he is worthy to be thanked even in the face of whatever my current condition and circumstances might be. I, I remember uh, buying a, a TV some time ago, and I hooked it up as I was instructed. I, I connected the white uh, cord, the end of the cord, to the white part of the TV. I, I connected the red cord to the red part of the TV. I connected the yellow cord to the end, the yellow part of the TV. And then I powered it on, and all I could do was hear it, but I couldn't see it. I went back to the manual, and I rechecked uh, my connections, and I powered the TV on, and still all I could do was hear it, but not see it. Finally, my wife walked in and looked behind the TV and snatched out one of the cords, in it and said uh, uh, into and plugged it into a different slot in the TV. And suddenly the picture came into focus. Uh, and then she turned to me and said, uh, you had the colors match right, but one of them needed another connection. Here it is. I, I believe that this is Paul's intent in to teach us using the power of his own testimony. 
that we ought to take some time and check the connectivity and to investigate if we, are, we have the right connection that gives power and sight and sound to our thankfulness. Whenever our thanksgiving is connected to things, whenever uh, they are connected to possessions, people, places, and thing, things, we are committing ourselves to a toxic and unauthentic thanksgiving because uh, we should, uh, our places of thankfulness should never be connected to people, places, and things. Because when our thanksgiving is connected to people, places, and things, and when they evaporate, when, uh, when, there, is, uh, when there is no fellowship foundation of our gratitude, this is why a man who is uh, cornered in the four walls of a cell, handcuffed and shackled to chains, whose life is on the line, could rejoice and write, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And I have to admit that I needed this reality check this week. I needed to restore the convictions of my own gratitude. I, I needed to reevaluate the core and the center of my thankfulness. Because in light of this current atmosphere and all that we have been through in 2020, it is easy uh, to become disheartened and disinterested in the bigger picture. It is easy uh, to be uh, in these difficult times to celebrate when it feels like we have nothing worthy of celebrating. Is there a witness out here that understands what I'm talking about? That 2020 has delivered us some dark days and some dark times. 2020 has brought us a global pandemic and that's not worth celebrating. 2020 has brought us an overwhelming totality of human illness and death, and that's not worthy to be celebrated. 2020 has brought us a crashing economy and joblessness beyond record, and that's not worthy to be celebrated. 2020 has caused global civil unrest and the contamination of justice and righteousness in our land. And that's not worthy to be celebrated. 2020 has created an evolution of evil in the highest places of authority and power in our land. And that's not worthy to be celebrated. And when you consider all of that, I admit that it's hard to rejoice. It's hard to have joy. It's hard to be thankful in your thankfulness is not connected to the right things. But when your thankfulness is connected to the wrong things, when your thanksgiving and your thankfulness is deposited into the single most highest deity and divinity of God, there is something always to be thankful for. There is always something to have joy about. There is always something to rejoice over. And when our thanksgiving is centered in the right place and in the right person. Paul gives us the benefits of what it means to live a thankful life. Paul's position and argument for the believers living in Philippi is simple. Simply how they are to live their lives. For Paul, giving thanksgiving and being thankful is not just a verbal gesture. Uh, it's not just a momentary expression. Paul believed to be really thankful and to express thanksgiving appropriately. Paul says the only way that you can really be thankful is you have to live a life that is worthy of the gospel which we represent. Paul says to, to simply tell God thank you by mouth wasn't good enough. Paul would have ascribed to the testimony that if I had a thousand tongues, uh, it still wouldn't be enough to tell God thank you. 
Paul, uh, for Paul, the only way to really say thankful to God uh, would be uh, to, to give God the collateral of our life. The only way that God can be really thanked, can I say it? Uh, thank you to God will we will require us to give God our reasonable service, which is the currency of our lives. For Paul, this passionate pastor, always provoking the people to of God to respond positively to the gospel, not because he happens to feel good himself, confident always himself, but rather because the church is in danger of allowing anxiety to get the best of them. There is nothing more sobering and saddening to God than when his church and the people who daily benefit uh, from his benevolent goodness and his undeserved generosity cannot reflect the life and living daily lives that says thank you as an offering and a goodwill offering to the Lord. And, and isn't it fitting that we in the light uh, today, we're lighting the first candle of Advent in the celebration of our Lord six months after uh, the blustery wind of Pentecost have died down and Paul summons the church at Philippi to rejoice in the Lord always. And why? And he gives the reasons as to why and how we should celebrate. Because Paul says we ought to have an unaffected joy. And how Paul gives several reasons that describe how to rejoice and how to have joy. And how we can consistently and continuously be thankful. First, he says that our Lord is near. In other words, our God who is transcendent above all things. Our God who is supreme in authority, who is high above the heavens, is also near to us. Paul reverses our, theologically, our theology, theology and corrects our dim understanding of our own suffering, pain, and anxiety when it appears that God is absent in our suffering, when it appears that God is absent from our pain, when it appears that God is absent from our anxiety, Paul corrects this idea that gives, that makes a God absent. And Paul says, no, no, God is not absent. In fact, the more we suffer, the more we are in pain, the more we are filled with anxiety, the closer God comes to us. Watch this. Maybe it is our condition that pulls God closer because God knows when it's time to come closer. One of the, one of the attributes of God is knowing where to be and knowing when to be where to be. Uh, watch this. He, he needs, uh, God knows where he needs to be. Because God ha can't declare himself as omnipresent and then be absent. And God cannot declare himself as omniscient and then not know the places and the times when God needs to be closer. So this is uh, what I believe. I, I believe that our suffering and our pain and our anxiety speaks to God on our behalf without us ever having to utter a word to God so that even if we never say we are in trouble, God has already talked to our spirit, and it sounds like this on the other side of redemption. Before I could figure it out, God had already worked it out. Second, watch this, Paul says, because the Lord is near, because the Lord is with you, then because the Lord can hear and see you, he says, then because of this, we ought to have a, a crazy confidence. We, we ought to have a divine comp, uh, confidence that allows us, he says, watch this, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with, watch this, thanksgiving, let your request 
be made known unto God. So a thankful life that's filled with thanksgiving is free from the agony of worry. Because a life that's filled with thanksgiving is thankful even before your prayer is rendered. Meaning my thanksgiving is not connected to the outcome of my prayer. My, my thanksgiving is connected to the one in whom I have offered my prayer to. Can you see the maturity in the posture of this reality? That the problem is we live in such a result-driven culture. We, we live in such a number-influenced time, so compelled uh, to by the conclusions that we forget that every prayer that the Lord didn't answer. Did you catch that? Every prayer that the Lord didn't answer is God answering. How do you know, preacher? Because every prayer that the Lord didn't answer is because God had something better in mind that was better and deeper and higher than your prayer. That's why the Bible says Paul wrote, likewise, the Spirit helps us uh, in our weakness. For we don't even know what to pray for. We ought to, we don't know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself uh, intercedes for us with groanings deep of words. And if you need more, this same Paul also wrote in Ephesians that even when we come up short, even when our prayers don't even meet the desires for which God has before us, even if our prayers fail to meet the expectation and the anticipation of what God wants to do. Even when our prayers don't meet the mark because there are times when God desire and he wants to give us more than we have prayed for. Watch this. This same Paul writes now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. One thing that I've learned about God is that God doesn't need us to bless us. No, in fact, often the Lord blesses us in spite of us because it's God's will alone to be good to us and it, it is his will to be good to us and it is not predicated on us blessing or being good to him. And can you just testify for a moment that I'm glad that God didn't give me everything I prayed for. No, but I'm glad that God reached beyond my feeble prayer. I I'm glad that God looked beyond my uh, critical condition. And I'm glad that God blessed me in spite of me. I'm glad that God knew how to be better to me than I knew how to be better to myself. Finally, the way that we maintain a disposition of thankfulness and thanksgiving, we have a guard that protects our hearts and our minds. Paul uses the same Greek word for guard in the text that he uses for soldier. In other words, Paul says that God's peace stands ready always at the door of our hearts, at the core door of our minds. And it blocks our hearts and our minds with peace. And it's the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. It's the kind of peace that cannot be comprehended with human understanding. Anybody know the kind of peace that I'm talking about? It's the kind of peace that allows you to be calm in chaos. It's the kind of peace that gives you confidence in conflict. It's the kind of peace that gives you hope in miserable times. It's the kind of peace that gives you faith when the money isn't there. Yeah. It's the kind of peace that gives you a maintain, a, a resolute and a resolve even in the revelation that nothing else can be done. 
It's the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. It's the kind of peace that keeps you going to church when you're sick. It's the kind of peace uh, that keeps on uh, get la- allowing you to give the Lord an offering when you got nothing left. Huh? It's the kind of peace that allows you to keep praying with tears in your eyes. It's the kind of peace that allows you to have praise when you got a, a peace in your mind and when you got trouble in your heart. It's the kind of peace huh, that keeps you coming back to church, huh? And it keeps you shouting when there's nothing to shout about. It's the kind of peace huh, that makes you run when nothing behind you. It's the kind of peace that makes you laugh when ain't nothing funny. It's the kind of peace that gives you joy on the inside. Paul says, here it is. It's because of these things. Paul urges them to revise their outlook on focusing right. Paul says, I want to give you some thankfulness to consider even while you're in danger. Paul closes the letter with this passionate plea. He reminds them you can be faithful in all things if you live a life of thanksgiving. So on this Thanksgiving time in 2020, I I believe that Paul is giving us something to be thankful for. Now I know what the enemy has to say. 2020 had delivered a global pandemic has killed thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across the land. And it seems that we have nothing to be thankful for. But Paul gives us a revision to what it means to be thankful. Paul says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable if there be any excellence if there be anything worthy of praise he says think about these things and i believe what paul is saying that the best part of our mind that god gave us is a memory to think back to yesteryear and all we have to do is look back over our life and we have enough to tell God thank you. We have enough to be thankful for. We have enough to be thankful for. Even though we got some unfortunate times, we got some troubled days, we got some difficult days, we still have enough to be thankful for. I hear somebody say, Lord, thank you for keeping me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for covering me. Thank you for blessing me. As I look back over 2020, I've had some troubled times. I've had some dark days. I've had some pain and some trouble. But Lord, I'm still thankful. I'm thankful for what you've done thankful for what you're doing thankful for what you're getting ready to do lord thank you for keeping me thank you for blessing me thank you for protecting me thank you for keeping me thank you for everything thank you for all of my good days thank you for all of the bad ones too Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for keeping me. Because when I look back over days past, Lord, I can truly say, you've been good to me. You blessed me. You kept me. You protect me. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody want to tell them thank you? Thank you for all of the good days. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for giving me hope. Thank you for giving me a future. Thank you for all of my good days. God, thank you for all of the bad ones too. 
and I'll just say thank you. I'll just say thank you. I'll just say thank you. And I won't, I won't complain. Lord, I thank you. On Thanksgiving, I just want to live a life of thanksgiving so that my life daily tells you thank you for all that you have done for all that you are doing and for all that you're getting ready to do God our future is in your hands and we thank you and God let me say if we spent too much time asking for things and not saying thank you enough, God, we repent and we ask God that you would forgive us for not being thankful enough and to tell you thank you for every good and for every perfect gift that you bestow. God, thank you. We thank you, we thank you, and we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to one say thank you for joining us today for yet another remote worship service. What a blessing it is to live a life of thanksgiving. We owe God our best, and God desires our best. So I pray that if this word has touched your heart and your spirit and challenged you to consider where you are in your faith walk and journey with the Lord, if the Lord is standing at your heart, knocking on the door, asking you to come in, I pray, we pray, that you would open up the door and let the Lord in. And not only let him in, but that the Lord, Lord, over your life. The doors of this great church are open to you. Not for the reception of members and membership. No. The doors of this great church are open for discipleship and fellowship. That we may walk beside you, live with you, and join with you as one community with one heart, one mind, one soul, and one worship. The doors of Third Baptist Church of Chicago are open to you. And if you are listening to me or seeing me, I pray that you will let the Lord in and not only choose him, but choose us, that we may walk beside you as family in the Lord. The Lord will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think he can change your life and God can even take the broken places and the broken pieces of your life and use them for your good this is the great God that we serve and I pray that you won't miss this opportunity to let the Lord be your Lord and your guide and usher you into a brand new future that's you today won't you call us? You can leave us a message and say that you want to join this great house. And we will call you, pray with you, and receive you unto this body. You can reach us at 773-445-8500, extension 238. Just ask to join the church, and we will call you and receive you unto this place. The Lord is good all of the time, and all of the time. The Lord is good. Won't you receive and say with me this final benediction? God, we thank you. We thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. And we thank you for what our spirits have experienced. Now, God, we pray that after we have heard your word today, after you have blessed us by your spirit, after you have called us to a place of goodness and called us to a place of righteousness, God, that we would give our lives over to you and be thankful in them, which not only blesses us, but blesses you. 
God, so now we pray that after you have done this great thing, that we would take your word and hide it in our heart. That God, when it's time, that God, we would bless you and bless your world and bless your people. Go before us now and make easy and successful the way. We pray the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide with this thy people henceforth now and forevermore. God, we give your name the glory and the honor and the praise do it. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. And it is so. God, we love you and we thank you. According to the power that is yours, we give your name the glory and the honor and the praise do it. In Jesus' name, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart and every mind say hallelujah, glory, glory to your name. And it is so. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you.